Let's talk about the global resurgence of the far right and attempt to trace how this has happened. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Nish, you are in no way qualified to weigh in on this subject. You're largely known to the public as the man stood next to Rachel Paris on a video a friend from university I don't really talk to anymore shared on Facebook, <laughs> or that guy they put on Question Time because Ramesh is now too famous. <laughs> and look, and look, I, that laugh hurts very deeply. <laughs> And look, I agree, but there is no ignoring this issue. In America, 11 Jewish worshippers were killed in a synagogue in Pittsburgh and two African-Americans were killed in Kentucky, following on from the pipe bomb sent to various high-profile critics of Donald Trump. And as if that wasn't bad enough, then came the news that Jair Bolsonaro has been elected president of Brazil, the world's fourth largest democracy, a man The Guardian has described as a far-right, pro-gun, pro-torture populist. Here he is. A man so hateful, his hands won't even make the heart symbol. <laughs> Bolsonaro used one of his first television interviews as president to deny that he is a fascist, which is not a great sign. If you enter a room by kicking the door open and shouting, Hello, I have not shat myself! <laughs> Everyone in that room is going to be thinking the same thing. I don't know who this guy is and why he doesn't understand doors, but he's definitely shat himself. <laughs> This follows the re-election of Viktor Orban in Hungary and the far right making major electoral gains in Germany, Holland and France. Meanwhile, Stephen Yaxley Lennon, better known as either Tommy Robinson or That Bellend, is planning a speaking tour to the US which could earn him a million pounds. Fun fact, I dislike Tommy Robinson so much I won't even allow him to have his picture in the little box. <laughs> that is just a mass report logo. I cannot stand that dude. I don't even want my face to be near him. I don't like it, even though he's not even there. Now, when it comes to the resurgence of the far right, I believe it was the philosopher George Santayana who said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I also believe it was the comedian Nish Kumar who said, oh, fuck! <laughs> So, why is this happening? Well, look, partly, a global financial crisis just causes a lurch to the far right. It's been 10 years since the crash, and to put that in context, 10 years after the Wall Street crash in 1929 was the start of the Second World War. This is what's happened time and time again. And you can trust me on this stuff, guys. I spent half my time at university studying history. What did you do the other half of your time, Nish? I imagine you were captain of the school's kissing team. <laughs> English literature. But this time... <laughs> The drift to the right has been aided by new media. Bolsonaro has used WhatsApp to disseminate propaganda, Tommy Robinson found his audience on Facebook Live, and tech companies have shown no willingness to crack down on misinformation or hate speech, perhaps because they generate revenue from their numbers of users. So, there's a reluctance to ban people or stop the spreading of damaging lies. As you can see from this tweet, Twitter even advertised in Japan with a picture of Donald Trump. And this is the only circumstance that that works in, by the way. No other product can advertise itself with its worst consequence. That's like Frosties advertising with a picture of Tony the Tiger losing a foot to diabetes. <laughs> Far-right leaders have also been enabled and encouraged by the financial sector. Bolsonaro was endorsed by the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, who described him as the Brazilian swamp drainer, and others praised his pro-business agenda, largely due to his pledges to open up the Amazon to mining companies. The financial sector is not an arbiter of morality, all it cares about is money, not consequence. That's why the film was called The Wolf of Wall Street and not The Nice Kind Doggy of Wall Street. <laughs> and the far right has also thrived in a climate where supposedly moderate parties have adopted their rhetoric. UK Home Secretary Sajid Javid tweeted about no-go areas, a far right conspiracy ridiculed by David Cameron three years ago. And in America, the Republican Party has largely lined up behind Donald Trump, who is nothing other than a mouthpiece for the far right, parroting their conspiracy theories and continuing to blame the media for the violence of the past week. Trump was criticised for walking on stage at one of his stupid, pointless rallies for idiots, hours after the attack on the synagogue, to Pharrell Williams' song, Happy. Although, at this point, the only songs anyone wants Trump to walk out to are I Quit by Hepburn or Under Arrest by Debbie Harry. <laughs> The far right is on the rise. As we've seen this week, when their views bubble up to the surface, there are very real and fatal consequences. Things are only going to get worse if we don't act. 21 years ago, the BBC made a documentary series called The Nazis, A Warning From History. And there's a reason it's called that and not The Nazis. You know what? It actually wasn't that bad. Why not give it another go? <laughs>
<laughs> this situation is not helped by the media. Earlier this year, the New York Times ran an op-ed criticising the press's reliance on euphemisms such as racially charged, racially sensitive and racially tinged when describing Trump's comments. There is a reluctance to use the word racist or make comparisons to Nazism, but we are dealing with individuals committed to curtailing democratic freedoms, encouraging violence against minorities and being openly anti-Semitic. These comparisons are entirely justified. I'm not calling everyone I disagree with Nazis. I'm not arguing with people who like the film Drive and then calling them gosling Nazis, even though I do think that film is a total piece of shit, right? <laughs> you know what, Ryan? Sometimes being quiet is just not acting. <laughs> And this is a global movement of groups who support and feed off each other. Bolsonaro and Trump have praised each other, and when Tommy Robinson was in jail, one of Trump's diplomats lobbied on his behalf. And if we're going to fight this, tech companies and social media need to clamp down on hate speech. We need to stop looking to the financial sector for moral guidance. Governments need to stop co-opting the rhetoric of the far right. And the media needs to be willing to appropriately classify prejudice. And if I can see that, then smarter people than me should be able to. After all, I'm a 33-year-old stand-up comedian with half a history degree whose greatest achievement is having a picture of myself put up on a wall in a kebab shop in Edinburgh due to a period of time during the 2012 Edinburgh Fringe Festival when I consumed an amount of shawarma that the owner described as borderline heroic. <laughs> So if I can work it out, anyone can. <laughs>